I didn't have enough to do all these three, we move on to the Forerunner. And if you followed us for Bronco videos, Bronco's gonna go on the back burner until I get a better setup. But we have the Forerunner now. So hopefully, if you like off-roading, if you like modifying vehicles and black-on-black -black vehicles, maybe you can take something away from this build. Specifically, with this, this video is going to highlight taking the KDSS suspension off of this vehicle. And not too many people would desire to do that, but if you want to run an extreme suspension, maybe you do. So I'll, I'll kind of put an aside in here, just there's plenty of people that do forerunners on YouTube, so I'm not the, the best suited for it. There's a lot of resources I use to go out and do research about this vehicle, what's in it, how to fix it, how to tear it apart. So I won't take too much time to go into detail with this specifically. The Bronco, that was a little different, not much material is out there. So what I'll do is I'll try my best to reference other guys in their videos because they did a great job. And really, this will be more of a showcase of transformation. So. With that said, we're gonna get tackled. We're gonna tackle this suspension, get everything taken apart to get it down to the nuts and bolts. So, I might take you through a, a time lapse and we'll talk to you along the way. All right, so here we're looking at the before photo or video rather of the off road premium suspension. Lighting's not great, so I'm shining the light in here. Hopefully you can see it, but long story short, I gotta get everything out of here to just keep the tie rod connected. Everything else, pull it straight out. Okay, in a nutshell, here we have the KDSS. It's a big, monstrous bar, which is connected to the frame via this pivot point down here obviously to the lower control arm goes across and then right here is the actuating ram connects to the other control arm and then works in tandem with the back the uh, hydraulic lines are going to be connected to the ram so really the removal of this is just taking it apart the bolts getting them out of there and uh pulling it off. I'm going to go ahead and unbolt some things around this area, like these supports here that tie in the subframe up here, and then this pan for other reasons, and then we'll go ahead and expose this, and then we can just undo some bolts here and pull it off. All right, quick update. The KDSS sway bar up front is taken off. And now we need to go ahead and get this actuating ram from the top side, loosen it and pull it out. It's also still connected to the hard lines. So we're gonna dismantle the hard lines piece by piece so that we can A, go down here. Here's where that ram's connected, pull that straight out. And then B, come down here to below the rocker. And you can see right there is that closed system, I have it draining right now. That way we can pull the hard lines from each side, front to back, and then that way we're not running into issues and binding, and just throw it in the used parts pile. All right, now we're looking at the back KDSS components, and we have the front lines that run along this frame rail. Those are already taken off, and these lines would just have to be undone, and then you see they come up over the frame up in here. Those would need to be undone, but the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna get this ram loosened and then the just solid bar on the other side. Come in underneath, get it off of the axle itself, loosen it so we can get this whole bar out. So I'll tear this bar out, these rams and the, the hard point, and then the line will come next. So I will get this stuff loosened, taken off, and then show you what I'm working with when it's all apart. 
All right, as you can see, the entire front suspension is removed. Still just have to remove this axle, and then we're gonna go ahead and start putting in new parts. But until that happens, like I said, pull this axle. The next portion's going to be these cam tab gussets. So I gotta drill those out. You can see in the front here, there's three spot welds. You drill those out, and then you pull that off. You clean up the metal, and then you weld on the new cam tab gussets. And there's eight total, so that's why that axle has to come out. I can access the two inside ones. But for the time being, uh, I'm getting impatient. I wanna get the welder fired up, so. We move on over here, you can see the knuckle assembly is fully disassembled. And now what we need to do is we take one of our two spindle gussets and we bolt that up, up top, and then weld the whole way down here. Make sure you have the right one. Yeah, that first one was correct. You put a bolt through the top here, hold that in place, and then you go through and you weld all this together. So what I'm gonna do is hold it in place, mark with a paint pen where it contacts so I know where to remove paint, and then get that to bare metal. I went and got some weld through primer just to be extra careful. So I'll coat it with weld through primer, buzz it in, and then once that's all said and done, let it cool and hit it with some black paint. So I'm gonna get this thing assembled and I'll show you the finished product. All right, so just as I thought I was ready to go, I got everything coated and set in place to tack. I kept thinking on how I'm gonna make this work with my sway bar connection, as you can see, this hole here would be my sway bar end link, and on the back side, it is impeded by this gusset. So, I realized I don't have the right spindle gussets in order to utilize a sway bar. I'm pointing that out because I'm gonna put a traditional sway bar that's the two inch long travel Total Chaos extended sway bar, and it utilizes factory end links on the vehicle. So, I'll detail that once I get to that point in time on how I'm gonna attach it since we didn't have a traditional one on this vehicle. But I went to Total Chaos and I ordered the correct spindle gussets, so they're gonna ship them to me today. So, just waiting on that. All right, so now we're to the point, we're gonna get these spot welds off of these, where these cam tabs go in, we're gonna put the new ones on. So, get these off, clean this up, and then I'll check back in. All right, as you can see, I have the tabs off here. And I wanna point out, you know, I went a little bit further than I probably should have, but that's what it may look like. But in reality, those welds, you know, they span outwards, so those things were on there pretty good. So I'm gonna go through, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind this flush, and then anywhere where it went too deep, I'm gonna put a fillet weld in there and then grind that off. That way it is just flat metal. That way there's nothing that can get in there and start to pit and, you know, deteriorate from the inside out. So I'm going to get this cleaned up, do the fillet welds, grind it down flush, and then I'll show those once those are said and done. All right, here I got all my cam tabs all welded up and it took a little bit of time because you got to assemble them, make sure that the bolt itself goes through and the eccentric still work. And then one thing I want to point out, if you do go this route, don't panic like me and think that they're all the same size. There are two different ones. One goes on the front and then this goes on the back. So there's circle on the inside is bigger for the front, but I have weld through primer sprayed all over these just for that added safety whenever I weld these together and then I'll go through and paint them black when it's all welded but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get them on the truck you put the bolts snug them up and make sure that they do have that eccentric still nothing is moved and then you tack them in place and then weld them so I'll get that set up and show you what that looks like 
All right, to wrap up the last part of these eccentrics, I just wanted to go ahead and show these cam tab gussets welded up to the frame itself. And I already have them painted here and already installed, but what I wanted to say was you would just go through, have these eccentrics go through a lineup, tack them in place, and then weld them on the back side for these back ones, and then you can weld over here. You can see I have a small bead there. Stay tuned, we'll get all of this suspension bolted up and you get to see the final product in this long travel install. If you have any questions, please reach out and I will put a link to another guy installing this who is pretty good at showing this as well. So if you need any help along the way, let us know.